British-born American tastemaker Terence Harold Rob John Gibbings was a thinker whose innovative ideas on interior decor and furniture design had a formative impact on American domestic culture during the post-war years. His face was known to millions living in those days as he turned his portrait into a trademark logo featured in promotions, advertisements, interviews, and magazine articles. For decades, the stylish Gibby, as he was called, stood at the forefront of American design, yet his legacy has only recently been rediscovered. Through four books that he authored, dozens of articles, lectures, and through furniture he designed for the Widdicombe Furniture Company, Rob John Gibbings had influenced the way middle-class Americans furnish their homes. When it came to style, his was rooted and profoundly inspired by antiquity. It was restrained, simple, unpretentious, and familiar. He started his career as an upscale decorator, creating homes for such celebrities as Elizabeth Arden, Thelma Chrysler Foy, and Doris Duke. But his most celebrated commission was Casa Encantada in Los Angeles, where Conrad Hilton lived with Zaza Gabor and where Elizabeth Taylor married his son. It was airy, luxurious, and complex, a modernized version of a Greek temple where neoclassical sensibility merged with elegant simplicity. But the real fame came when the upscale decorator was turned into a mass culture tastemaker, a celebrity advising Americans on matter of furnishing, manners, dress, and style. Attacking the vogue of collecting English antiques was the key theme of his first book, the bestseller Goodbye, Mr. Chippendale, where Rob John Gibbons sought to revolutionize American taste. Style, he often said, should reflect the cultures and societies that produce them, and therefore advised Americans to stay away from English furniture and rather live in an authentic American style. His mission of bringing affordable modern furniture to a broad public was completed with collections he designed for Widdicombe Furniture Company, available in department stores during the 50s. He proposed alternative aesthetics to the plastic, tubular steel, and plywood furniture that flooded the American market and wasn't afraid criticizing star designers such as the Eameses. His furniture was modern and traditional at the same time, made of woods coated in deep, sparkling finishes. In 1965, at the age of 60, Rob John Gibbons moved to Athens and settled in an apartment overlooking the Parthenon. Finally, he was able to devote the time to genuinely reproducing ancient Greek furniture, which he described as young and untouched by time. It was the final destination of the man who devoted his entire life to the study and revival of the essence of classical Greece. <laughs> ¶¶ 